This is Rob Cedar, and in today's segment, we're going to start setting up our laptop data center using Hyper-V and Windows 8. Okay, so first let me explain what I mean by laptop data center. Uh, when I talk with other, other developers and IT professionals, they're not necessarily familiar with Hyper-V and what you can really do on even on a Windows 8 machine. And so the idea here would be, imagine you have your workstation, in this case I have a Windows 8 machine, uh, what if this were your laptop? And what if you could run a bunch of machines, a bunch of virtual machines, meaning workstations like Windows, uh, you know, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10 workstations, uh, Windows 2012 servers, Linux installations. What if you could run these virtual machines on your laptop? Well, that's kind of what we're talking about because the technology for that has really evolved to where you can pretty easily do that now. So I have uh, this machine that's sort of set up for special projects. And I want to explain a little bit about, how, uh, about how to do this. So I'm really doing this from scratch. Uh, in this case, I have an AMD processor and I have 16 gig of RAM. RAM is very, very cheap nowadays. Uh, so there's really no, hopefully no excuse uh, for you to get a decent amount of RAM. And 16 gig is plenty for you to have several machines, you know, because uh, typically you'd need, you know, uh, you know, at least probably two gigabytes you know, per machine. But even for Linux machines, you can use even less than that. Uh, so this really gives you quite a bit of headroom to be able to install uh, virtual machines. Uh, the second issue, though, is really disk. And the tricky part with disk is that you really do want a solid state drive. Uh, so in this case, and again, this is sort of my, uh, my test machine. And so in this particular case, I have a hard drive, which in this case, I think is a, um, this is an old hybrid drive, I believe, which has a little bit of SSD space in the front. And then it's a, um, a 7,200 RPM type drive in the back. Um, so this isn't anything special, but for my VMs, I have, in this case, this is a 240 gig SSD, a solid state drive. And if you're not familiar, those are significantly orders of magnitude faster than a, than a traditional spinning hard drive. Uh, and, and again, nowadays the prices have come way, way down. So I have, um, this drive to store all of my virtual hard drives. The, this is where I can store the C drive, basically the system drive of any of these virtual machines I wanna set up, I can store them here. And then I also happen to have this two, uh, this two terabyte drive, uh, which is a typical slow, old fashioned um, spinning uh, hard drive. Um, and I basically just have this in case any of those virtual machines need extra disk space. Like for example, for storing a large database or anything like that, I can create VHDs or virtual hard drives out, out over here. So I'm going to store all my system or my operating system uh, C drives on this uh, on this uh, solid state drive, and any additional storage I need, I can basically go create over here. Now to enable Hyper-V, uh, you can get to this a few ways, but you can just right click on the start menu. In this case, this is Windows 8.1, so this is before the start menu uh, came back in Windows 10. Uh, so you can right click here and do programs and features, or you can go into control panel, however you want to get to it. Uh, and then on the left hand side, there's the option for turn Windows features on or off. So I'm going to click on that. And this brings up a list of all of the Windows features. And sure enough, I see in the list here Hyper-V. Now, to be really clear, you have to have uh, Windows 8 or 8.1 Pro in order to see this. Uh, as of this recording, uh, Windows 10 isn't out yet, so we don't know uh, what, which SKU is going to have and is going to have this. But if you're using Windows 8 or Windows 8.1, you must have the Pro Edition in order to see this. And so all I did was just click the checkbox. I'm going to click OK, and that's uh, literally just going to install the Hyper-V server, and that is the software that's going to allow me uh, to run virtual machines within this machine. So we're just going to follow the prompts, uh, let this install, and then it's going to want to reboot. Okay, so we're back from a reboot, and now to launch Hyper-V, I'm going to click on the Start button, and you can do this a few ways, but I'm going to uh, go into this, or you could go into the search term in the right-hand side, uh, and I'm going to look for Hyper-V, and so sure enough, I see Hyper-V Manager. That's the one that you want, and that's what basically got installed just now. And so this is sort of the main console of how you'd interact with your Hyper-V server that's now installed locally. And so this is the machine name, and within here is a list of all the virtual machines you might have. Uh, one of the first things we're going to need off the bat before we even go to create any machines uh, is we have to go into this virtual switch manager on the right-hand side. 
Uh, so what this is, is because we're dealing with virtual machines here, we have to have a predictable way to interact with the network card. And so Hyper-V wants to have its, basically wants to have a direct control or wants to have a way to uh, intercept or uh, a way to manage uh, connectivity to the actual network. And so in this case, I can go into the virtual switch manager and there's three types of switches I can create here. And you can kind of think of these as really virtual network cards. Uh, private, and you can see the description here, a private uh, virtual switch basically makes it so all of the virtual machines within this Hyper-V instance can talk to each other, but this host machine can't talk to those machines and it, also those machines can't reach out to the outer network. So this is truly a private network be, you know, between all the virtual machines that are here. Uh, internal is very similar. All the virtual machines can talk to each other and they can also talk to the host machine, but they can't talk outside. So they can't actually go through the network card to, to talk with the with the local uh, network that, that the physical machine is, host, is connected to. Uh, external is probably the most common. And so this is where you're creating a virtual network card that is bound to the physical network card that you have on your computer. So uh, again, and this, this particular machine is, uh, you know, has has a physical, you know, this isn't a laptop, although this very easily could be, but in this case, this has a physical, uh, you know, Ethernet type uh, type of connection, uh, but it could certainly be wireless. So in here, I'm going to say I'm going to create a uh, an, a new external virtual switch, and here we're going to call it something. So I just want to call it external, just so I'll know that it is, and I say, yeah, I want to bind it with my network card. In this case, this is I just have one, so that's it. So when I click OK, uh, this is going to disrupt the network for a minute. And now we're back. Uh, there isn't anything really to look at. I can go back into I can go back into the virtual switch manager to go see that it's that it's set up there and I can manually set the MAC address and things like that. But there really isn't anything to, to really see. That's just something that I know we're going to need for a future step. So the next step would really be to create a new virtual machine. To do that, I can either right click on this uh, on the actual host name here and say new virtual machine, or I can go on the right hand side menu and click on new virtual machine, same sort of thing. I click on that and it basically brings me through a, uh, a wizard and it's just as simple as you might think. And the, for the very first one here, um, I wanted to, so again, the scenario here would be imagine this is your main uh, laptop that you do, you know, your professional development on. And presumably that host machine needs to be stable. Um, but on the, on the other hand, you also probably want to play around with new technology, right? So in this case, I need a Windows 10 machine, right? So Windows 10 is, is still in community technology preview and I want to uh, play around with it, but I don't want to, I don't want to break down my laptop for that. Instead, I want to be able to bring this up in a virtual machine so that I can go play with it there. So in this case, I'll call this uh, Win 10 test, for example. And uh, in this case, because I do have a separate hard drive uh, for my VMs, in this case, that, because I specifically wanted it set up that way, I am going to change the location of this. Um, so if we go back to, if you remember, we have the sys1 here. So under VM definitions, that's where I'm going to put this. Um, so that way I'm going to store the definition for the virtual machine on my E drive, which is a solid state drive. I'm also going to put my C drive there too, which we'll get to in a minute. This uh, generation and generation two, generation one, generation two, um, I have never gotten a generation two to work, even with Windows 8 or Windows 2012. Um, as I understand it, this is where they, they're really trying to push the whole new secure boot stuff, but it really doesn't seem like it works uh, properly yet with any operating systems at all. So uh, so basically, until further notice, I, I continue to use generation one whenever I create a new virtual machine. Here's how much uh, how much memory you want to give it. Uh, one of the clever features of Hyper-V here is this whole dynamic memory. And so what how this works is, for example, I can give uh, two gig of RAM to this to this machine, and if I turn on dynamic memory, it'll start off the machine with two gig of RAM, and if it doesn't actually use two gig, um, then it'll basically give back RAM to this host machine that I'm on. So that basically means that I could potentially use up to two gig on this virtual machine, but if I'm not actually using two gig, uh, Hyper-V is going to give it back to the host machine to use, uh, which makes it so you can run more machines if you wanted to. It, again, sort of in a test environment. This isn't how you'd set up production necessarily. Uh, so I'm going to do next. 
Uh, remember how we created ex the virtual switch? This is why, because we basically couldn't go through the, this wizard if we didn't. Um, you, ha you have to sort of set up a virtual switch first. We certainly could add the network card later, but just to make it simple, we, we added the virtual switch ahead of time. And so in this case, I want, this vir I want the virtual machine, this Windows 10 machine, I want this to be able to connect uh, to, uh, to the outside. I want to be able to connect to my, my local network here and to the internet. And now, lastly, this is, uh, again, this is significant for me too, um, because my the E drive in my case is an SSD, this is where I want my C drive to be. So this will basically be the first hard drive, which as you know, in Windows is gonna be a C drive. So it's gonna store it on, on in this case, on my, on my E drive. And so this gets kind of confusing, but if you picture that, so I'm on the host machine now, right? So this is my Windows 8 machine. I have a hard drive where under here, it's going to create VHD files, which are gonna be virtual hard drives. So inside of the VM, it's gonna look like it's a C drive, but in real life, it's actually gonna be a file out on this out on this system. So that might be confusing. We're gonna take a look at that uh, once, once we have this set up. So for now, we're just gonna uh, consider that uh, this Windows 10 machine is gonna have at least one hard drive to start, and it's gonna store it on my E drive, and it's gonna look like it's a 127 gigabyte drive. Uh, which, which is fine for now. And we'll get back to the disk drive stuff in a minute. Lastly, is uh, you can this is purely optional, but if you wanted to make it easy on yourself, you could either um, physically have an operating system disk that you put into your local CD-ROM, or if you have MSDN, which I'm assuming you do if you're watching this, uh, because otherwise it's kind of difficult to, to get a hold of, um, of media. In this case, I actually have several operating systems here that I can and actually will be installing. Uh, so in this case, I have, a, I have the technical preview, the Windows 10 technical preview, which is out. So I'm going to choose that. And so this is just, this screen is purely for convenience. This basically says that on the first boot up, uh, what should this do? And so this is on the very first boot up, it's going to, um, instead of trying to boot from the hard drive, it's actually just going to boot right off of this ISO file, which if you're not familiar, an ISO is sort of a DVD image. Uh, so it's almost like mounting a, it's similar to mounting a, um, a physical uh, a DVD or CD-ROM. So it's going to mount the ISO file uh, and try to boot off of it. And that's what's actually going to kick off our Windows 10 install. So I'm going to click Next. This gives me a summary of what, what we're doing here. So it's Win, Win 10 test. It's going to be Generation 1, 2 gig of RAM. We're connected to the outside network. It's going to store everything on the uh, E drive, which is my SSD, which is good. And it's going to kick off the Windows 10 installer once it's done. So I'm going to click finish. And now we have our very first virtual machine. Now, again, just as a reminder, we're, we're on a Windows 8 machine. So this is Windows 8, uh, but, we, but we installed Hyper-V. And now I have uh, at least a placeholder for Windows 10. So in this case, again, ahead of time, I already downloaded the ISO from the Microsoft site uh, for Windows 10. So if I double click on this, uh, this basically shows me the console of that virtual machine. What we saw a minute ago, if I turn this on, in theory, this should really boot off of that virtual drive. This should boot, this should boot off of that ISO uh, that I downloaded. And sure enough, here it is, it's starting to boot off the ISO. And this should kick off basically the Windows 10 installer. Now, I'll spare you the details of the of the installation of Windows 10 uh, because it's also it's also going to take some time. Um, but so let me inst let me install this, and I'll come back and show uh, what this looks like inside of the virtual machine and what it looks like from the host. Okay, after all that, now let's wrap up. Let's see basically what we did here. Um, so Windows 10 is installed and it's up and running right now. So there's a couple things I wanted to point out. So uh, again, just to really reiterate, we're on a Windows 8, Windows 8.1 host machine. We installed Hyper-V uh, and then within Hyper-V, we created a Windows 10 virtual machine. Um, and in real life, what, wh where that got stored was on my SSD on this E drive. Uh, so we stored the definition for the machine uh, out under here. Uh, and this stores other things like snapshots and things like that that are, that are under there. Uh, and then this is probably the most confusing of it. Um, this what we see as the C drive inside of the virtual machine is actually is actually stores everything inside of this file. So Hyper-V takes all of the I/O requests that you make within that virtual machine and basically stores it into here. So it looks like the C drive and the virtual machine is actually storing everything right here on my SSD. Uh, so let's go look on the inside. So now if I double click on this Windows 10 test, I sure enough, I can connect to the console of this of this thing. 
I'll run this in full screen mode here. So here, so this is what's kind of weird is I can, I do Explorer. Again, remember we created a virtual drive that should be 127 uh, megabyte, 127 gigabytes, for example. Uh, so we should see, oh, this thing is still booting slowly. Let's try that again. File Explorer. So here under this PC, sure enough, I have my C drive, uh, which looks which looks to me like it's 127 gigabyte file. In real life, like I said, it's not. It's actually storing. This is a virtual machine, remember. And this C drive in real life is actually out on my host machine inside of here, inside of my virtual hard drive. So what looks to me inside of this virtual machine is my C drive is actually being stored right here inside of the VHDX. And as you might imagine, and going back to what we talked about earlier, um, that's what this is for, is that, as you might imagine, you can create other VHDs and then mount them, and they'll actually be visible in here. So I can create a D drive, you know, that's a terabyte in size, and I'll be able to see it from here. Um, so that's sort of how that works. Uh, and, and, oh, and then the, the other probably important part is the network. Um, you might remember that this is set up as a... Uh, as an external switch with an external switch and so sure enough if I go into my network uh, settings here it looks like uh, it basically looks to me like I have a virtual network card uh, and this did get uh, this got an IP address from my from my own local DHCP so everything worked fine and if I go back into full screen mode again uh, and I can get out onto the internet and everything right so the so the external switch part worked fine too so hopefully this sort of demystifies a lot of this process of how to create a virtual machine and sort of what Hyper-V is and how it, how it works. And to me, the most interesting part is that if you're a developer and if you need, or for example, want to play around with Windows 10, you can now do it in a sandbox and it doesn't really matter what happens in here, right? Because it's a, it's a virtual machine that you just created. Uh, and if you're some other IT professional or someone who wants to work with uh, Active Directory or Exchange Server or SQL Server or whatever, and we're going to talk about this in, in coming sessions, uh, is in here you can create additional uh, virtual machines and you can even create Linux virtual machines. Uh, so hopefully this helps demystify this a little bit more. And, um, and and yeah, so that's it. So that's basically how you can set up Hyper-V on a Windows 8 machine. And it's uh, it's it would be absolutely identical, by the way, on a Windows uh, Server 2012 machine as well. Uh, it's exactly the same process, uh, but the significance here is that you could actually run this on your laptop. Thanks for watching. If you like videos like this, please subscribe to this channel, follow at Rob Cedar on Twitter, or go to blog.robcedar.com.